Xpeng have just launched the P7 Plus globally. I'm talking the E-Rev and the electric car version. This is the updated version, and I've got the full details on this car. I reckon this is actually going to be a, a pretty big success for, for the company because this is essentially a sedan with all the advantages of something like a wagon. Think about it like this. The Audi S6 or the RS6, that's a wagon, right? You think wagon, more practical than an SUV, but actually this has more boot space. This has 570 liters of boot space and it's got a, a lift back at the rear. So it's actually one of, one of the most impressive technological vehicles on the market. You know what? It has some of the amazing full self-driving. In fact, probably the best full self-driving outside of a Tesla. Plus, it's practical and relatively affordable. Here are the full details on this new updated model. This is going to be a global car. This is not just a Chinese special. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. If you can join us on our YouTube member page, that'd be fantastic. I'll put a link in the description below. Xpen is set to launch the refreshed P7 Plus in a couple of days. By the time you see this video, it probably has been launched. There also is an e rev version. So P7 Plus, it's um, apparently going to be the longest range hybrid in the world. And I'm in mean proper hybrid where you can drive it on battery power alone. I'm talking the longest range on battery power alone. So there's a new model coming out. It looks a bit different to the previous model. In fact, it looks a lot different to the previous model. The e rev will have 1,550 kilometers of range. Yeah, 1,550 kilometers of combined range. The range of the EV version is 725 kilometers. Now that's CLTC, so probably about 610 kilometers WLTP. Xpeng say that there are 104 enhancements to the model and they've upgraded 36% of the vehicle. Now I should point out the hybrid version of this car is an e-rev. So it's not a FEV, it's not a plug-in hybrid. That means that the engine, the small generator engine, only exists when the when you need to to turn it on to recharge the battery it doesn't power the wheels at all which i think is a good thing now this car is going to be sold guys in 37 countries worldwide so a lot of countries markets it's coming to the purely electric range will be 430 kilometers meaning it's the world's longest pure electric range extender vehicle sedan i should say sedan now, how big is this car? It's 5,071 millimeters long. It's nearly 5.1 meters long. It's quite a big car. 1,937 millimeters wide and 1,512 millimeters high. The curb weight is, for a car this size, it's actually remarkably light. It's 2,160 kilograms. Now, talking about the E-Rev version first, it has a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. That's the range extender. 110 kilowatt, 148 horsepower, and that, like I said, only powers the battery when you need it to, which is going to be very, very rarely, I'd say, with this kind of electric-only range. Power output is 180 kilowatt or 241 horsepower, and the top speed is 200 kilometers an hour. When the P7 was first launched, the starting price was 26,000, and the most expensive version was 29,700. The drag coefficient is 0.206. Very, very good. I'm not sure if how many companies, you know, they talk about drag coefficients and I'm always a bit questionable on those coefficients, but this is a very efficient car. And because it's rear wheel drive, it gets that, like I said, the 180 kilowatt, 241 horsepower rear motor, 450 new meters of torque. That's the base model. If you pay a bit more, you get a more powerful motor, 230 kilowatt motor with 308 horsepower, which is and it also gives you 450 newton meters of torque. Battery options for the EV version. The base model gets a 61 kilowatt hour battery, the mid range 76 kilowatt hour battery, and the long range has a, a range of 725 kilometers. The base model with that smaller battery gets 615 kilometers. Charging speed is actually um, one of the biggest key advantages to this car. It's Got charging speed of approximately 500 kilowatt and the battery takes 12 minutes to charge, yeah? So 
12 minutes to charge from 10 to 80%. It's one of the fastest charging batteries that'll be available. And one of the fastest charging EVs, I should say, available outside of China. Now, China has reported the trunk volume to be 725 litres and to be expanded to 2,221 litres. I believe that's for the electric car model, 725 litres. The E-Rev gets about 560 litres of space. Both of these options, both of these models have massive, massive boot space. Now, guys, I'm looking at the actual specs here from Xpeng, and you might want to know um, this information here on the actual full self-driving. They say it's going to have self-driving level 2.5. And to achieve that, the, the car gets 11 cameras on the outside, but they're eight megapixel cameras. Teslas with their hardware four have five megapixel cameras. So eight megapixel, 11, eight megapixel cameras is actually um, very, very advanced. There is also three millimeter wave radars and 12 ultrasonic radars. So it appears as though Xpeng are not doing vision only for this car from what I've seen from the actual product, the product brochure. On the inside, there's an 8.8 inch instrument panel right in front of the driver and there is a 15.6 inch central con control screen. In the back, there's also a, a screen a lot like you get in a Tesla and that is an eight inch screen. There's also a heads up display and streaming media for the rear view mirror. So it's a digital rear view mirror. There's a heads up display, a rear screen for the passengers. There's a screen in the front for the driver, 15.6 inch screen as well. Plenty of screens in this car. Plus, like I said, that digital rear view mirror. Now the car does of course also have the Turing chip and the number of chips you get in the car is dependent upon which model you get. You pay more, you get more Turing chips, more processing speed and more ability for the car to drive itself, of course. Now, can the P7 tow, the P7 Plus I'm talking about here, 1,500 kilograms is its braked towing rating, 750 kilos without brakes. So yeah, towing is actually pretty good. Now, in terms of suspension, it actually has DCC, which is damping continuous control. And I think that that's a little bit like what Tesla has in their latest cars with their constantly adjustable suspension. In terms of the actual suspension architecture, the front is double wishbone and the rear is five link. Base model standard wheel sizes are 19 inches, which is really good. You're gonna get more range as a result of that decision to go smaller. So kudos to Xpeng for doing that. You can get 20 inch rims as well though. So if you prefer bigger rims, they will be an option. Brakes, there is an intelligent power booster, brake booster, and there's also of course, um, full regen braking. Key performance metrics, zero to 100 in the quicker model is 5.1 seconds. That's for the EV. Our braking distance is 35 meters from 100 kilometers an hour down to zero. That's actually pretty good braking distance. Energy consumption is claimed, this is in China guys, it's at 11.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's probably gonna to equate to approximately 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers outside of China, which is still very, very good efficiency. Might be just under 15 potentially. Now, to give you an exact fast charging speed, it's actually 451 kilowatt. So if you combine that with it having a lithium ion phosphate battery and really good range, I think it's actually all around one of the best cars in the world in this class in, in terms of sedans you can possibly get. Now, I believe the fast charging speed for the E-Rev is 350 kilowatt. So it looks like you can add about 300 kilometers of range in 10 minutes charging on the E-Rev, which is pretty damn impressive. It does have vehicle to load. So vehicle to load is 3.3 kilowatt. And the battery also has some interesting thermal protection. It says there is no thermal runaway propagation with 1000 Celsius plus fireproof materials, liquid cooling and explosion proof valves. That there is actually a bottom plate protection. I believe it's made of steel. 1000 MPA, high strength steel and composite materials dispense impact energy with standing up to 2000 joules of external impact. Now, in terms of the impact, one of the reasons why this vehicle does have better impact resistance is because it uses gigacasting. So I believe there's two very, very large pieces uh, 
ultra high strength steel is used for the body structure, the actual structural battery pack. And then there's two large gear casting pieces, one at the front and one at the rear. And then you put the structural battery pack in the middle and they're joined together by those two large gear casting pieces. So there's essentially like three big pieces to this car. And that's much better than the way that traditional cars are manufactured with hundreds and hundreds of different separate pieces, which are welded, glued, stamped, et cetera, et cetera, riveted together. Doing it this way, it makes a car much more rigid and it makes it much, much safer. Now, one of the cool features that I saw with this car, which is quite unusual, is active noise cancellation or RNC. Xpeng says their car uses A to B vibration sensors and error microphones to cancel out noise that comes from the outside of the car. That's really, really cool. And how this works is it actively generates anti-noise, achieving a five to 10 decibel peak road noise reduction. A lightweight software versus hardware design improves vehicle range and handling, say XPeng. But uh, really what that means is, you know, you get road noise when you're in an EV and you can really hear tire noise more than you can in an internal combustion car because there's no engine to drown out the noise. And I think having this, not only acoustic windows, so laminated acoustic windows to reduce noise, but also having this RNC active noise cancellation, which you know, people have been talking about this for years, but it's very rarely seen in affordable cars. But having that will massively improve the NVH. Xpeng says that it provides an absolutely quiet driving and riding experience for in-vehicle occupants. In addition to that, Xpeng say that they have actually put 36 sound absorbing pieces into the car along with that double layer glass. So 36 sound absorbing um, fabric, fabric pieces plus double layer glass in order to reduce noise. So the actual official numbers here from Xpeng are that the NVH achieves 26 decibel sound insulation, which is right up there with the very best in the industry by blocking, isolating and absorbing noise. Now guys, I don't know about you, but I, I think this is maybe the best feature of this, of any car. Cars that are really quiet are so good because you, you kind of think to yourself, I've got, a, I've got a really good sound system in this car. I think it must have a premium sound system because it's so quiet, you can hear the sound system much better. You might have the same sound system as what's in an internal combustion car, but you can hear it so much better and you can talk more quietly. And you can have conversations more easily and you don't feel drained. I, I feel like going for a long drive in a car when it's noise, road noise, engine noise, I feel like that kind of drains you physically. So the sound system, what do you get? There's a 20 speaker, high fidelity system, self-developed 2.0 system with 18 plus two speakers. I'm not sure what that, why they said 18 plus two, but anyway, there's 20 speakers in total. One of those speakers is in the headrest, which is a really cool feature. The headrest means that speaker just talks to you, the driver, and you can you can have a phone conversation. You can be on the phone with people in the car, and they won't hear a word. They'll hear nothing. Only you can hear what's on, what you know, what's being spoken by the person on the other end of that call. There's also an optional zero gravity seat, right? In the four wheel drive version of this car, there is a zero gravity seat for the passenger. Standard though, you do get um, rear seats that recline to 127 between 117 degrees to 127 degrees so those rear seats recline so that you can if you're sitting in the back you can sit more comfortably and get maybe get some sleep there is also massage seats in four seats both the front and the rear plus heating and ventilation so that's nice they're having massage seats on the front seats and the rear seats another feature here and i don't know if this is going to be the global model but there is a luxury grade um napa leather genuine leather seats. I haven't seen this in any other x pink before. Maybe there have been some, but I've never seen them. So that's a nice, nice upgrade here from x pink as well. Guys, if you've got any questions about this car, let me know in the comments or by email, but I'll be hopefully test driving one of these within the next few months and giving you some, you know, genuine feedback on this new model. Um, for me, the E-Rev probably won't test drive that, but I'll definitely test drive the fully electric version. See you on the next one. Bye-bye. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone.
So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing, not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.